hello everyone and welcome to the another exciting video of pharmaceutical scientist channel so today we will be de and discussing about the quality control lab weight lab analysis so whatever the test we do in the weight lab and what does it mean so let's get started so the contents which we will be seeing are the weight chemistry lab definitions second is con uh, water content and lod third is lod under vacuum and lod under drying primary standard secondary standard next is acid and ignition and the last is normality and molarity so let's get started to the topics in detail weight chemistry what do you mean by weight chemistry or uh, weight lab in definition weight chemical analysis involves identifying and quantifying the desired elements present in the liquid sample right whatever the liquid sample we have so we need to determine how much is the content in this and what are the content present in this so there are two types weight chemistry one is quantifying and one is the qualitative and one is the quantitative you can read here it can be divided into two main types qualitative analysis identifying the element and the quantitative elements uh, and determines the quantity right it is called weight chemistry since most analysis is done in liquid phase Weight chemistry is also called bench chemistry since many tests are performed at lab, lab benches. Right? Uh, whoever the lab scientists uh, are there present in this uh, video, they can understand that uh, what is the weight chemistry. Uh, whoever the freshers are there, for there I have described in detail. The techniques including titration, distillation, spectrophotometry, colorimetry, filtration, drying, weighing, pH test direct reading with electrodes so these are the tests which are performed in the weight lab chemistry there are few other tests but these are the mainly tests what is difference between water content and lod this is important question for the experienced candidate and also for the fresher candidate water content the amount of water present in the analyte in any form including hydrated molecules is known by water content and lod means lod or loss on drying means the amount of volatile substances present in the analyte all volatile presents including water so this is the difference basic difference you see in the water content if we are analyzing any sample by water content so only the water present in the sample can be analyzed but in case of lod lod we are drying under vacuum right this is vacuum uh, this is and we are drying under uh, oven sorry not vacuum so the L, the substances whatever the present here the water content and the volatile substances like methanol, ethanol or acetonitrile or ethyl acetate whatever the analytes or whatever the solvent present in this those are also evaporated right at 105 degree or whatever temperature we are hitting so this is the difference in LOD water plus these elements are removed uh, from the sample but in case of water content we only, only analyze the water present in the sample in water content we determine only water and in LOD we can determine water except hydrated molecule and organic volatile substances solvents present in the analyte this already I, I have described to you all what is difference between LOD under drying and LOD under vacuum you have you have seen what does mean by LOD now there is also two types LOD under vacuum and LOD, LOD under drying both are used for the same purpose of determining the percentage of water and organic solvents present in the sample by vaporizing them right in the both cases this is lod bottle right this is lod bottle and sample is present here so if sample is any way vaporized right right the organic solvents present in any way vaporized we uh, we heat or we give the temperature of around 105 degrees celsius to the sam sample but the basic difference is you see in this lod under drying if we in this we dry the sample at a temperature of more than water uh, boiling range generally uh, we use uh, 105 degrees celsius because water boiling point is 100 degrees celsius and most of the solvents have the boiling point lower than 100 degrees celsius right so uh, whatever the we have given the here temperature we boil at 105 degrees celsius and water is 100 boiling point is equal to 100 degrees celsius so this is the main thing you need to understand this method is suitable only when our sample melting point is more than 100 degrees celsius if our sample melting point is 100 less than 100 degrees celsius we cannot determine the water or sol any solvents having the boiling point less than the drying temperature right if our sample is say st stable at more than 100 degrees celsius then only we can give 105 degrees celsius right if it is less than 105 degree 
if we heat the sample then the sample may degrade right so this is mainly known as LOD under drying what do you mean by LOD under vacuum now you need to understand that if our sample has the lower melting point melting range less than 100 degrees Celsius like 70 or 18 few of the samples we do have so we cannot vaporize the water or any solvent more than the drying temperature in this case we use somewhat less temperature than the sample if we use high temperature sample melts for drying by applying the proper vacuum to absorb the water or solvents present in the sample right the main difference of both the method is when sample have high melting range more than 100 degrees celsius we can determine the LOD by drying and when the sample have low melting range less than 100 degrees celsius we can determine LOD by drying the under vacuum so you understand here i will again describe you in detail we have to so we have two process LOD under drying and LOD under vacuum in this case vacuum means as the name indicates we apply a vacuum we apply a vacuum to the sample uh, to a sample less than 100 degrees celsius so that uh, with the vapor the the with the vapor the solvents present in the sample are evaporated right and our sample will and, and our sample will also not degrade this is the very good advantage of LOD under vacuum LOD under drying we know our sample doesn't melt under uh, at 105 degree so we simply go and apply the heat to the sample so this is basically different this is asked in the interview as well what is primary standard and what is secondary standard this is very common and very basic question I'll pri a standard which is capable of preparing a non concentrated solution by direct dissolving of a standard and dilating to an accurately known volume or volumetric flask is called primary standards requirement of a primary standard like NaCl uh, so and the bisodium carbonate requirement of primary standard should be available in pure form or in a state of non purity in general total amount of impurities should not exceed 0.01 to 0.02 percent and it should be possible to test for impurities by qualitative test by known as sensitivity this is very uh, basic question you might have read in college days also and the, these are the requirements would be easy to dry should not be hygroscopic that is water during weighing i will not go through this all you can pause the video and you can read note eco-friendliness in environmentally friendly means it should not affect the surrounding environment this is also a basic requirement examples like uh, php potassium hydrogen phthalate forest tenderization uh, bisodium carbonate nacl zinc powder arsenic trioxide period these are very uh, less used uh, uh, primary standards not commonly used secondary standards a solution is standardized by titrating with a primary standard itself is a secondary standard right we have secondary standard and this is primary standard so the secondary standard are tried right uh, with the primary standard and the values are determined like sodium hydroxide sodium per perchloride hcl edta agno3 uh, silver nitrate sulfuric acids uh, nitric acid right and this is uh, this is important question we uh, many phrasers and many experienced person also don't know this uh, questions and these answers so you need to understand here why we use only sulfuric acid but not nitric acid or any other sulfated as in for residue of ignition test right the purpose of this is to determine the inorganic content you need to understand this thing in a sample by adding sulfuric acid we convert the inorganic to the sulfate derivatives in the given sample the inorganic sul sulfates are very stable even at high temperature up to 1000 degrees celsius right so we can easily estimate the inorganic content present in the given sample by ignition but in case of nitric acid HNO3 inorganic converts to their nitrate derivatives and if we use HCl they convert to the chloride derivatives which are not stable at high temperature right H2SO4 HCl and HNO3 right we have three types of acids very strong acids so if we use this HCl and HNO3 convert their nitrate derivatives and if we use HCl they convert to chloride derivatives so you see here so the amount of inorganic content in the present in the sample we will not be knowing right because they will convert to their nitrate derivatives and chloride derivatives so along with other inorganic solvents we will also weighing these samples these contents so we will not know exactly whatever the content is there therefore H2SO4 is used right next we will see about the what is the normality 
and what is molarity normality means the number of gram equivalents of solute present in 1 liter of solution this is known as normality and what is molarity the number of moles of solute present in 1 liter of solution at a given temperature right molarity is equal to weight into 1000 by molecular weight into volume this is very basic questions you can just read and remember what is difference between humidity and relative humidity humidity means it is a measure of amount of water vapor in the atmosphere we also we uh, say sometimes that humidity is more or humidity is less so you can relate to that thing amount of water vapor present in the atmosphere relative humidity water vapor amount exists in the air expressed at percentage of the amount needed for saturation at the same temperature right uh, it is compared against this so you can tell about what is the relative humidity this is all about this video so let's if you like the video then please do like and if you comment a video if you have any questions or if you want any other topics uh, to be in detail you can comment if you like the video please share with your friends and subscribe the channel thank you for watching thanks a lot